qualitative data analysis might look complicated, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, it's really, really interesting and really, really fun to do. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through an example of how you move from a pattern to a theme to an argument in qualitative data analysis. So here we go. All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is walk you through how you do some pattern coding and then take pattern coding into themes, do thematic coding, and then shift from thematic coding into making an argument. Now, what you see in front of you is a question from a survey that 137 um, participants responded to. How did you make decisions about which courses to take? This survey comes from a um, longitudinal research study that looked at online learning for teachers, for K-12 educators. And for this particular group, they had um, about, I think, 43 different courses, and they could decide which courses they wanted to take. And they were all around things related to teaching, reading, and writing in their classroom. And so um, I, at some point I gave them a survey and I asked them on the survey, right, how they made these decisions. Now, I also interviewed people and I'll talk a little bit throughout about that. But what I really just want to hone in on is um, how I approached engaging in the coding and sort of take do a deep dive with um, just a really explicit example. The thing to know about this is this question that you see here, while it is a survey question, it's not the research question, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I took this question and how we can move all the way through making a claim, but at the end of the day, it's not a research question. It's not necessarily a finding in and of itself. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please head down to the comments and let me know um, how I can be a little bit more clearer there or other questions that you have about that. But when you've got a survey where people are, you know, writing in their responses, you're gonna have to go through and code it. And so the first thing that you wanna do is look for patterns. Now, for me, this example that I've gotten here for you, these are all patterns around this concept of struggle, all right? So some of the ways that participants made decisions about what courses they should take was grounded in a particular struggle that they were having. And for this survey question, there were three different kinds of struggles. And I'm gonna show you an example from each one. So the first one is coded as struggle to teach. And so you can see here, this participant wrote, I look for courses that help me in places where I struggle. If I have a hard time with something, then I know I should probably take that course. This person used the word struggle explicitly, all right? You'll notice in my next two examples that they did not use the word struggle explicitly, but they did use synonyms that would align with this concept of having a struggle of some sort. So this first pattern, that is emerging here is coded as struggle to teach. The next pattern that emerged is coded as struggle to mentor. And so a lot of teachers in this study had a master's degree, they had more than 10 years of experience, and it was very common for them to be in positions where they were mentoring uh, beginning teachers. And excuse me, and so some teachers made decisions about which courses to take in order to help them be a better mentor. And so in this particular quote, you can see here, it says, it depends. Recently, I had to help a new teacher work on her vocabulary instruction. I think I'm pretty good at that, but I had a really hard time breaking it down for her so that she could understand what to do. So I thought if I took a vocabulary course, even though I already knew most of what was in there, it would remind me of the basic principles and help me communicate better. So this person and people that fell under this pattern, they said, hey, I'm really good at, the, at what I'm teaching, but I'm not so good at explaining it and helping somebody else become good at it, right? And so you can see this person didn't say, didn't use the term struggle, but said, oh, I had a really hard time, right? I had a really hard time breaking these concepts down, okay? So that got coded as struggling to mentor. And then the third pattern that emerged um, under the struggle within that struggle um, theme is coded as uh, my students struggle. And so this is a really subtle shift from struggle to teach. And you'll see here, it's really about how people position themselves or position, in this case, students. So this person wrote, I tend to think about what my students are having a hard time with. Lately, I noticed that many of them are doing the readings too fast and not taking the time to work through places where they have comprehension difficulties. So I look for courses that will help me understand what to do so I can help them improve. So you'll notice, right, with this code, they're positioning their students as having struggles. With the struggle to teach, they're saying, I, as a teacher, struggle, 
right? With my students struggle, it's my students are having a hard time with something, my students struggle. So that doesn't necessarily mean the teacher is having a struggle, it could, but that person didn't say that in this response, okay? So that's why those are coded as two completely different things. Now, once we've got patterns sorted out, and, and obviously you keep doing this, right? You can't, I would take this question, I would keep looking for additional patterns. I just wanna show you an example of one primary pattern. Now we wanna shift to themes. We wanna group this around a theme. And so hopefully I can get this to move. There we go. Um, the larger theme here is this concept of struggle, all right? So 53% of survey respondents out of 137 people communicated a struggle in some way, all right? And so 27% said, hey, I'm struggling to teach something, so that's why I picked a course. 18% said I'm struggling to mentor in this area, and 8% said my students are struggling, and that's how they made decisions about their courses. Now, with qualitative data analysis, when I review articles um, for publication, for journals, a lot of people stop here. And a lot of people, when I, when I get to their findings, they will say, here are the themes that emerged. Those articles never get published, not in a good journal, okay? Because if you're saying, here's the themes that emerged, you are stopping short of where you need to be with your data analysis, okay? So what you need to do next is move into making an argument. You need to make a claim. So let me back up real quick. If I was gonna take, right, this theme of struggle and the fact that I've got three different patterns here that are all focused on this theme of struggle and I wanna make a claim about how teachers decided which, um, how teachers decided which courses to take, this is how I would word that. 53% of teachers surveyed N is 137 out of 190, selected courses because they believed and or hoped it would alleviate a struggle experienced by themselves, their students, or another teacher. That argument captures this, right? But do you see the difference, right? If I said to you, let's say this was my research question, and I said to you, okay, well, there are three main themes that emerge, right? People um, struggled, and then like I could name a couple other themes, but I'm just saying like, I'm just telling you the themes. I'm not putting it into an argument and making a claim. I can take all of this and word it into a very nice, concise argument. From here, right, then I would be diving into the survey data to support that. Maybe there's some counter evidence that I, I'm gonna show you where maybe, you know, there's some confusion or questions or people were, you know, were confused about how to make decisions. I might offer that. I also interviewed people as well from this group. And so I would then use that interview data to dive more deeply and to support this claim as well. All right, so I hope that um, helps, helps you see how to take something from a pattern to a theme to an argument and helps you as you move forward in your qualitative data analysis.